Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now, out of the over 34,000 fish in the world, it is quite strange that none of them live on land, because there are plenty of other types of animals that both live on the land and in the water, as there are aquatic mammals, reptiles, birds, and amphibians. But there are plenty of fish that can spend a short time out of water, and even travel across land in short distances. So in today's video, I will be going through five fish that can walk on land. And we'll start off today in the tropical marine waters around Australia and New Guinea, as we have the epaulette shark. Now, this is a rather small species of shark, reaching a maximum size of around a meter or 3.3 feet long and in its native range it's normally found in shallow water normally around coral reefs and tidal pools and in the shark world the majority of species follow the same blueprint as they normally have slender torpedo like bodies which are great at covering large distances and hunting down their prey but the epaulette shark is very different as like some of the more peaceful species of shark they don't need to constantly move to breathe as they can often be found resting and preserving their energy and the epaulette shark is actually in the group of sharks known as carpet sharks, which also include wobbegongs and the whale shark. And the epaulette shark also has extremely muscular pectoral fins, but these aren't to help this species swim, as they're muscular to help them walk. As when the tide is low, this shark can often be seen hauling itself out of the water along rock pools and shallow reefs. And this ability to leave the water gives this shark easier access to its prey. As in the confined waters of rock pools, it's much harder for their prey to escape, meaning that they have a higher chance of success. And these prey items are normally crustaceans, mollusks, and smaller fish. But the problem with being a fish out of water is that you're unable to breathe. But luckily the epaulette shark is a master at holding its breath as it can survive 60 times longer without oxygen than humans can. And to be able to do this, the epaulette shark slows down its breathing and heart rate and essentially powers down its brain. But even after gorging itself on all the prey in the rock pools, it still finds itself in a sticky position because as the tide lowers, the sea gets further and further away. And in some cases, the shark will have to stay in the rock pool overnight. And this can be particularly hazardous as the amount of dissolved oxygen in a pool can drop around 80% overnight. But as the epaulette shark is so good at holding its breath, and dealing with these hypoxic conditions, they are often able to wait out the night before returning to the sea the next day, as some epaulette sharks have survived for an hour without any oxygen in 30 degree heat. And this really is an impressive ability, seen as the majority of sharks need to keep moving to breathe. And this really has to be one of the hardiest sharks in the ocean. Before our next species, we'll be staying in the Indo-Pacific, as we have the mudskippers. Now, there are around 32 living species of mudskipper, and they are very well known because of their unusual appearance and their ability to survive both in and out of water. And out of these 32 species, the largest can reach a maximum size of around 30 centimeters or 12 inches. And in the wild, they're normally found in intertidal waters, such as swamps, estuaries, and mangroves. And these are perfect habitats for the mudskippers, as the tide is constantly going in or out, which exposes their preferred prey, which in most cases is worms, crickets, flies, mealworms, beetles, and small fish. But there's a whole new set of problems when it comes to being a fish out of water, as there are suddenly a lot more animals I would be more than happy to take you out. But to help the mudskippers spot these predators, they have very well adapted eyes, as their vision is often better out of water than it is in water, and their eyes are mobile and retractable. And having their eyes on the top of their head means that they can see almost 360 degrees around them. And mudskippers usually walk on land by using their strong pectoral fins in a similar way to how seals move. But when a predator is nearby or if they're in danger, they'll use their tail fin to launch themselves in the air and hopefully away from danger. One of the other problems of spending time on land is that they're unable to breathe. But the mudskippers figured out a way to deal with this problem, as when they leave the water, they close their gill chambers, trapping water and air inside. And this means that the gills can continue to function, so they have a sufficient supply of oxygen. But this isn't the mudskippers' only way of breathing. They can actually breathe through their skin and mouth lining. But to be able to do this, they need to be damp which is why mudskippers are normally found in humid environments, as they can always stay moist. And mudskippers are also great builders, as they're often dig burrows, which gives them an easy access to water, so that they can stay damp and carry on feeding while the tide is low. And all these adaptations and behaviours mean that some mudskippers can stay out of water for around two days at a time. So out of all the fish on this list, the mudskipper has to be the species that's most well adapted for living out of water. But for our next species, we'll travel down to Southeast Asia, as we have the walking catfish. Now there are a few species that go under the name of walking catfish, but today I will be focusing on the Southeast Asian species. And in their native range, they can be found in swamps, pools, rice paddies, canals, and ditches. And the walking catfish is a master of survival, as they're able to breathe atmospheric oxygen, which not only means that they can survive in stagnant waters, but also means that they can completely leave the water and find a new place to live. Because as its name suggests, when conditions become unfavorable, or they've eaten all the food that they can in the water source that they are in, they're able to leave the water in search of a new place to feed. 
and to do this they usually move in a snake-like way, wriggling their way across the land. And when they do find a new water source, they're not very picky when it comes to their diet, as it often feeds on mollusks, invertebrates, detritus and aquatic weeds. And on this diet they can reach maximum size of around a metre or 40 inches long. And as they eat so voraciously, they can reach this size rather quickly, and this has led to them being used in aquaculture as a very dependable supply of food. But if you've watched any of my invasive fish videos, you also know that this is a problem invasive species over many countries. And the walking catfish is almost a perfect model for an invasive species, as they can travel wherever they like and eat whatever they want. And because of this, it is now established in Florida, where for long periods of time, it was decimating fish farms by strolling in and eating all the fish and eggs. So I'm sure a lot of fish farmers out there would wish that this fish didn't have the ability to walk on land. But for our next species, we'll be heading to marine waters worldwide, as we have the gurnets. Now I am slightly cheating with these fish, as they do walk on land, but this land is underwater. And in the world's oceans, there are over 100 different species of gurnard, which span across two families. And the largest species, the tub gurnard, can reach a maximum size of around 75 centimetres, or around 30 inches. And the vast majority of these species live their life on the seabed, usually feeding on small crustaceans, shrimps and crabs. And one of the things you may notice about the gurnards is that they have strange appendages by their pectoral fins, and these can look very much like fingers in some cases. And because the gurnards spend so much time on the seafloor, sometimes swimming isn't the most efficient way of getting around, as they will often walk with these strange appendages along the sea floor. And these strange fingers also help them find their prey, as they can root around in the sand, which helps them discover hidden crustaceans and worms. But spending so much time on the seabed leaves you very open to predators. But some species of gurnard have a very interesting way to deal with this, as they have large colourful pectoral fins, which they deploy when predators are around. And this not only confuses and threatens predators, but also makes the gurnard look a lot bigger than it really is. So although it's very good at walking, it doesn't really walk on land. But for our final species, we'll be moving to the brackish waters of the tropical West Atlantic, as we have the mangrove killifish. Now this is a rather small species of fish, only reaching a maximum size of around 7.5 centimetres or 3 inches long. And in its preferred mangrove habitat, they mainly feed on terrestrial and aquatic invertebrates. And to get at some of these prey items, it's more than happy to leave the water, as they can often be found in crab burrows, in leaf litter, logs, and even coconuts. And the main reasons for why they leave the water is to search for food or to escape poor water conditions. And when on land, it completely changes its behaviour and its body, as when in the water it tends to be very territorial and aggressive. But on land it has no choice but to be relaxed, apart from when hunting its prey. And to be able to breathe on land, it alters its gills so it can retain water and nutrients, and its waste is excreted through its skin. And by breathing in this way, it can spend up to 66 consecutive days out of water. So out of all the species on this list, mangrove killifish comes closest to living on land completely. But that's about it for this list. There are plenty of other fish that are known for walking on land, but I do go through those species quite regularly, and I thought I'd throw in some weird ones. But if you think there's any other fish that walk on land that I should have featured in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.